Oh, hello there. My name is George Staples, and I'm one of the tour guides here at Historic Washington State Park. And we are in the Print Museum. And this machine here, called the Linotype Printer, was quite an invention back at the turn of the century, from the 1800s to the 1900s. It was made by a fellow that come from Germany. His parents named him Ottmar, O-T-T-M-A-R. Ottmar Mergenthal. Now, in his town in Germany, they had a Lutheran church that had a huge clock. Now, at the age of 13, little Ottmar crawled inside of that clock. It hadn't run in over three years, and he fixed it. Quite a phenomenal child he was. Had mechanical capabilities far beyond what most people could even imagine. Well, he immigrated to the United States, Artmar did. Wound up in Washington, D.C., and finally settled in Baltimore. There he became interested in the printing industry, and he wanted to do something to revolutionize the process. He thought this up in his own mind, on the model that somebody else had unsuccessfully completed. 10,000 pieces it has, 5,483 moved pieces. Quite a feat. Thomas Edison, in fact, called it the eighth wonder of the world. Otmar, when he invented this, used for a mold something of brass called a matrix. Now this is the mold side where the molten liquid pours. The other side of the matrix is the letter itself. So that when the printer printed the letter and they lined up alongside of one another, he could tell whether or not he spelled what he was doing correctly. And at this angle here is a key. There are 90 different matrices, each one of them different. Not any two are alike. Now, when the operator sat in this chair, he did so only after seven years. Seven years of school. Three years in which he learned how to operate it. Another four years, he learned how to fix it. They didn't have any engineers or mechanics able to just work on this machine. Well, he struck one of these letters, one of these matrices was loosened by one of these rods up here in this tray. And it dropped down a chute onto elevator one. It would then go up to elevator two. Now there they would accumulate across there in a line until the line was completed. It would then be sent up to what we call elevator three. Now in elevator three is where it gets a little warm. 550 degrees Fahrenheit warm. This hook here has suspended from it what we call a pig. Now a pig is 10% tin, 90% lead, and it is suspended into an iron furnace down there, heated at 550 degrees, it melts that pig down into a molten liquid. And it spits out a portion of that molten liquid against this bread matrix of brass, producing what we call a line O type. Thus it's named the line O type printer. Now we know that we are fallible individuals and occasionally we make mistakes. And all of the mistakes wind up in a little box here that they used to call the hell box. And that's where they take all of that scrap lead, melt it down again, pour it into ingots, and make more pits. Now we go around here to the fourth elevator. Now up here, this arm brings this track up here 
all the letters in place sliding across that track. This screw fixture here is rotating, drawing those letters back over into place. Now, if you recall, I said each one of these is different, not any two are alike. They can only fall into the proper place in which they are keyed, coming down into a tray of letters ready to be used again. Otmar Mergenthaler made his first one in 1886. It was patented later in 1892. Still carries his name on the faceplate of the machine. Quite a feat. And I'd like for you to come visit us here in historic Washington State Park. Meet the Linotype printer and all of its relatives. Thank you.